Welcome back to another episode of Card Talk, a podcast where we spend a little bit of time talking about cards from Lord of the Rings card game. I'm your host, Dave Walsh. And I'm Grant Thompson, just along for the ride. <laughs> There's Grant. We, uh, we're we missing Ted today because he, I guess, had to eat or do lunch or something. So, Yep. So, um, how are we feeling today about our patrons, David? <laughs> We always feel pretty good about our patrons. Um, we really like our patrons a lot, and one of the things that I wanted to do in this show is to thank them specifically for helping us keep the lights on. Um, one of the things that I think that we can do at Card Talk is help provide a diversion for all the things that are going on globally right now. So as patrons, you guys really help us um, provide that diversion for everybody who listens, and we can't thank you enough for that. So I wanted to thank each of you personally, um, Daniel, David, Jason, Joseph, Justin, Kyle, Lewis, Mike, Dominic, Phil, Rob, Robert, Robert, Russ, and Sean um, for helping us provide that diversion for everybody who listens. Um, and I wanted to give a special shout out to Dominic, who is the uh, one of the organizers of Lure of Middle Earth, which is a convention that happens over in Germany, and they play Middle Earth the Wizards and Lord of the Rings card game. And I was... Um, I was glad to hear that the convention was able to go on um, despite all the um, stuff um, that are that's happening globally. Um, I guess it came in just under the wire as people started um, closing down and um, international travel became an issue. So, Dominic, way to go. Um, all reports say that um, that the that the conference or the convention was amazing, and I'm glad that you got it in, um, and all that wor hard work paid off. So, awesome job over in Germany. Um, but let's let's shift because you know we don't want to talk just about our patrons although we could probably spend a lot of time talking about our patrons um let's and just how awesome they are <laughs> i know they are awesome aren't they um let's talk about the card that we're going to do so grant do you want to introduce the card that we're going to talk about i suppose i'll give it a good sacrifice <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well. uh, we are going back to the days of the good old corset, and this leadership event that costs one, he sacrificed him val valiantly. Um, <laughs> so, valiant sacrifice is a one-cost leadership event, which after an ally card leaves play, that card's controller draws two cards. Yeah, this is this is a, in my opinion, this is a pretty great card, um, but. Uh, what do you what do you think about this card right now? I've always thought it was a good card, even though I kept it in the binder. Um, I didn't really play with it, but I knew it was um, a great card. But it was just something about allies being discarded, well, allies leaving play, that I just thought, I don't want the allies to leave play. Just let them be. Just leave them on the board. Um but since archetypes have been defined, like the Sylvan archetype, like um, Gaffer bouncing back and forward from your hand, and the Bjorning archetype where you discard the skin changer or discard a Bjorning to get another effect, this card has become a little bit more popular. Oh, yeah, because it's after an ally leaves play. You don't necessarily yeah. have to have it leave. Um, it doesn't have to be destroyed um, like the errata on the Horn of Gondor. Um, they've changed early on, I guess, in the in the card's life. It used to be when a card leaves play or when an ally leaves play, you get, an, a, get a resource. But now it's, yeah. it's changed when an ally is destroyed. destroyed. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I agree with that, that uh, there's a lot of good archetypes that you can play this card with. I've also found uh, that when you go and search on Hall of Bjorn, the search engine, when you search up leadership card draw, there's not a lot of general card draw available to you. So, yeah. um, and the reason why specifically I'm looking for leadership card draw 
is when I'm playing the new con the Grey Wanderer contract specifically. I've, for some reason, I've been uh, playing this. I'm I'm playing I don't know Herluin, Grey Wanderer or Khalil Grey Wanderer leadership, um, and so you because it's an event, you need the leadership card to or you need it to be a leadership. You need the sphere match because you're usually going to play this not during the planning phase. And so the Grey Wanderer contract only allows you to play um, your first card in the planning phase. So you need to maintain that sphere match. So when you're playing a leadership Grey Wanderer deck and you need card draw, this seems to be a go-to card in that case for card draw because it doesn't of course it costs you something. It costs you an ally. Um, but you can sneak attack Gandalf when Gandalf come, comes back into your hand. You can play this and then draw two cards for Gandalf. Um, and I, it's just, I think drawing two cards for one, even though you're losing an ally, I think it just makes it very easy to deal with. I think that... You know, especially in that Grey Wanderer, you're going to rely more on your allies to do stuff, and there's more of a chance that the, those allies are going to be leaving play. And so, I don't know. Like, I I really like this card, and I think that the bigger the card pool has gotten, and the the different kinds of, um, like you said, uh, as they're developing archetypes more and more. Now, we're going to be done in three adventure packs, but. You know, I think that this card can see more play than maybe um, it it was seeing. I don't know prior prior because I think that there's more use case for it. I think that yeah. having having leadership card draw may not have been a thing before. I think that you know when you play Daron's Runes and Drinking Song, like you those are the ultimate uh, dark knowledge deep knowledge which one is the one that gives you the, the draw two cards everybody draws deep two knowledge cards. is doom two draw two right for everybody so like i mean those cards are all better than valiant sacrifice but now that we're playing one hero decks or we're doing these i think valiant sacrifice has seen a resurgence or at least in my own deck building because i need specifically a leadership card draw I know I keep saying the same thing, but I think that it's important to note that, well, that you need that resource match in order to use this throughout the whole throughout the whole round because of because of the way the contract is worded. So, what do you think? Well, apart from the art being amazing, Boromir sacrificing <laughs> himself for Merry and Pippin, um, I think going off what you were saying about leadership card draw. Now, let's have a look. Uh, <laughs> I already looked it up. There's 16 cards and that's counting the two versions of Gildor and Glorian. Right. And then there's so, and then there's Diligent Noble, which you play it and then you um, draw a card. Draw a card. Uh, right. We have We Are Not Idle, which in a sense is free. It's a free draw. Yeah, but uh, it's specific for dwarves. No, it's not, because you can play it without the dwarfs. You can, but you need dwarf heroes in order to trigger it. No, you just need... Um, it's the. Um, you see, I've always played it as um, you exhaust X dwarfs to get a re resources. Exhaust dwarf X dwarf heroes to add yeah. X resources. So you need the dwarf heroes in order to... Right, okay. Well, then we've got Campfire Tales which is a good all-around card draw for multiplayer, well, mm -hmm. anything. And then you have, obviously, Rod of the Steward, which, if you're running a leadership deck, you're generally running Steward of Gondor. Right. And Rod of the Steward is a good way to get card draw. Yep, it's good for those extra, extra resources if you have extra resources in leadership. But yep. you're spending resources for one... You're spending two resources for one card... As opposed to Valiant Sacrifice. I mean, it's about pointing out the differences, right? That, yeah. like, it's just a different use. This is an attachment and not an event. So that's, so this, this may be a different, I don't know. I don't see Rod of the Stewart being used that often, though. Um, It's not as heavily used as it could be. 
I mean, with the resurgence of the, well, with the inclusion of the Grey Wanderer contract, I think it could be seen it be used a lot more because of the fact that you'll always have more resources because generally if you're running Grey Wanderer, you're going to be running resourceful. You'll, if you're running leadership, you'll be running steward of Gondor. Yeah. And you'll just be generating six to eight resources a turn, give or take. Right. I mean, you can really uh, get you can really get the resources going with. Yeah. Um, prepared for battle is another good leadership card draw event. Well, side quest. Yes, you have to explore it, but generally speaking, you'll explore that fairly early on, turtle up and explore it, and then you get multiple card draw each round. Right. It's like a permanent. Bilbo. It's a Bilbo that's never yeah. going to go away. Lore Bilbo. Yeah. Yep, because it's it's the exact same effect as Lore Bilbo. The first player draws an additional card. Right. But it's a side quest, and you don't have nine threat taken up by <laughs> <Right>. that. <laughs> exactly. Um, but no, those are some of the um, ones that come to mind. Other yeah. than follow me. <laughs> Right. I mean, I think that Valiant Sacrifice holds a very good niche. There's not very many of these cards that um, that allow you to draw two cards for one. Yeah, but you, you know, do have to lose an ally to do that. Right, and so this is one of those cases where you probably are going to play this because you're going to be using chump blockers, and like it doesn't work if you're going to lose a hero. So... You know, it's it's uh, which is funny because Boromir, <laughs> Boromir is a hero. I know that there's an ally version of Boromir. That's I'm, I'm not saying that, but it's like uh, <laughs> Boromir is a hero. So you would imagine that it would say after a character leaves play. Um, I think if the um, if they did that, um, obviously they did that because obviously if they did after a hero le- leaves play. Um, obviously, this was before we had like the Caldara um, discard feature, mm-hmm. um, the Falco Boffin discard. But now, with all that in, I can understand why they didn't do that because that would have made it overpowered. <laughs> yeah, if you could, if you could, um, after a character leaves play, draw two cards, you could have. Now, the thing about it is, I guess, that Falco and um Caldara. Caldara are limited once per game. Yeah, now so. they are, but when the first came out, um, I don't think well Caldara I definitely know wasn't. I'm not sure about Falco. I think Yeah, Falco was always less. limited. Um yeah, they learned their they lesson. Little... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um but I think that this card has it's is is worth keeping um keeping your tabs on knowing where it is um oh, it's oh, not definitely. it's not a unique card draw situation it's great um for multiplayer because you you know if you're playing three player and somebody else loses you can spend it and that player's controller draws too like um so there's a lot of there's a lot of flexibility in this because oh, you're probably so. going to be losing allies right like i mean what are the ch- like even if you accidentally lose an ally if you have a choice between losing an ally or losing a hero you're going to pick the ally and if you have this in your hand you at least get two cards for it right yeah i mean it this card i seem to see working better on your slippery sylvan type deck where you are bouncing cards in and out every turn to make it work Right, and it even if it's just sneak attack, which is in sphere and another core set yeah. card, like I, I'm not saying that this card is amazing. There's plenty of other more directed card draw cards that are better, and, you know, like for this. But I think that as the the card pool is rounding out and we're needing specific use cases, I think that Valiant Sacrifice is a pretty general use case for card draw i you know i i don't see it not being a pretty decent option when you're going through card draw i agree yeah um i mean like i say it sits in my binder for the longest of times i generally don't use it because i'm of these people that i'm going to keep my allies around regardless i'm going to keep my cards where they are (laughs) 
Right. And um, but I can see the use for it, and I have on occasion built a deck with it in um, on a two-player or three, like a multiplayer game scenario, where it's like I put it in my deck, and it's like right, well, that person's going to be defending across the board. They've got sneak attack, Gandalf. They've got this. They've got that. I know characters are going to leave play. I'll put it in and I'll give them card draw. If I happen to need it and I lose a character, all the better. But generally speaking, I'm focused on the overall of how things work rather than individual card draw, which I'll look at, say, something like Deep Knowledge or um, Rod- um, or We Are Not Idle or Campfire Tales, depending on what we need. I mean, I was thinking about your what you said earlier about Bjorn, the Bjorning skin changer. Yeah. Like you, when you play your Bjorn deck or Grim Bjorn deck, it's you know you have Theodred, so you have the leadership, you have yeah. the leadership <laughs> and the sneak attack. You know, so I mean, this fits right in there, and oh, definitely that card. It, it may be a good include. I forget what you use as a card draw engine if you um, have it, but. You know, um, like, it's generally Legolas. Oh, right. I mean, so this is... I think that this could be worth a card slot in there for something. You know, like, I think that... Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a pretty good deal. So. Oh, definitely. And it might be something I'll look at in the future when I go to modify my Grimby Own deck. <laughs> yeah, and I think either we are going to be talking about or we have already talked about um, depending on the release order of the shows Ted and I talked about you know it's not necessarily a flashy card but sometimes you don't need a flashy card to make your deck start to really sing you know like yeah I agree with that statement sometimes it just takes the bread and bones and mm-hmm. builds something and that one card just makes everything work that a little bit better. It may not be right. the best card in the world, but it works. Right. Um, should we so, should we ring this guy? Uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> I was going to say, do you have anything left to add? No, I don't have anything left to add. Yeah, okay. Well, for anybody who is new to the show or has forgotten, we uh, rate a card. Uh, we have a highly scientific yet arbitrary system where we ring a card on a scale from one to ten, where one ring is the one one card to rule them all. It's the best card in the game. Or um, ten rings, uh, and ten rings, which is um, the worst card in the game, uh, which we throw back into the fiery chasm from whence it was made. Thanks again, Phil, for that tagline. Um, if... Uh, uh, so, Grant, I'll let you go first. Valiant Sacrifice, where do you feel? Where do you feel it falls? I'm giving it a five because it's not the best card draw out there. It's great for leadership, but again, I'm not one that wants to lose cards or um, capitalizes on losing cards. Protect those allies. Exactly. You <laughs> protect the backbone of your army. Right. <laughs> um, but. That being said, I can understand its uses. It's better than some. It's worse than others. I'm putting it middle of the road. <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean, I agree. And I've been, I've been talking about use cases for this card. But I, like I said, I don't think that necessarily this card is the best. But I do know that when I need leadership card draw, this is maybe the, you know, maybe up there in terms of reliant card draw like you said you have to lose an ally but i'm not afraid to lose an ally um i would be afraid to lose an ally just to get the card draw uh, but i think that leadership also has ways to kind of bounce things back and forth in and, in and out of play um with sneak attack and things like that so um but again like i said i don't think that this is the um that this is the number one best card draw option out there there's plenty of better card draw options out there but you know as the as the as the um as the card pool rounds out here i think that this is one to keep in your back pocket so i'm gonna have to give this seven rings um because because it's it's useful but in just specific situations so there you have it we talk about valiant sacrifice and uh we'd love it if you joined us again for as we talk about more cards in the game have a great day folks and if you're interested in finding this or any of our back episodes of card talk 
Feel free to search YouTube where you can find our flagship video episodes with the username Card Talk 2018, or you can search the RSS feed Card Talk 2018.libsyn.org for our extended audio versions of our podcast, or you can find us on Facebook at Card Talk 2018. And if you have any questions for Grant or myself or for both of us, feel free to email us at cardtalk2018 at gmail.com.